Okay, uh, this video should be the last one I need to do because uh, each time I'm doing one of these videos, I'm showing a type of question. And in physics, there's, there's only so many types of questions I can give you and uh, to cover forces. This one is the I'm pulling a weight or some sort of object that has mass across a surface, but I'm, I'm pulling it at an angle or I'm pushing it at an angle. And what do I do? How do I work it out? This one is, uh, in particular, it's, it's kind of nice because it also, it doesn't just ask you, uh, what is the force? What is the net force? It's asking you something a little extra there. Um, so let's go through the question and see what we can do. So to move a 45 kilogram wooden crate across a wooden floor, and we have a mu there. So we, we, we do have a coefficient of friction. And since it says to move it across, we assume that this mu is for kinetic friction. So let's just start um, drawing what this all looks like. So I'm going to have a crate. Uh, let's draw that crate down. All right, there we go. And it's going across the floor. So uh, let's just, uh, just draw the floor there. And we also know that it is uh, uh, 45 kilograms. So we know it's mass. And we also know that uh, mu k is equal to 0 0.20. Okay. I tie a rope onto the crate and pull on the rope. Okay. While you are pulling the rope with a force of 150 newtons, it makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So if I had to look at that, there's my horizontal, and it makes an angle of 30 degrees with it. So in other words, the rope, I'll do it from the center, although it would be tied to the edge of the thing, but we're not going to be too concerned about that. I will be pulling, in other words, I'm pulling this way with 100 and 15 newtons and this is an angle of 30 degrees and that's all I got now I do know there's a few forces so obviously the first thing I should do after I've drawn the, the picture is get my free body diagram worked out so away I go what should I start with I know what you're shouting you're shouting do friction Mr. Bial do friction absolutely let's do this so I have, um, did I say friction? I meant force of gravity. Do force of gravity first, Mr. Gale. <laughs> so I've got gravity. That also means that I'm sitting on a surface. That means I'm pressing on a surface. So I absolutely have a normal force as well. So I've got my normal force. I just said that I have a rope and I'm tying it this way. So I have 150, now we'll call that the force applied. And if I'm pulling this way, that means I'm probably moving in this direction. So therefore, opposite that direction has to be my frictional force. So that's what I got. Now, every time you have a free body diagram that looks like this, you should be transforming it because this is no good. This, this, this angled uh, force is not going to help you. You can't add it or subtract it from any of these things. You have to break it into components. And I know um, automatically, I know, hang on now, I'll just get a different color. Um, I know that this force here is made up of a force going this way. We'll call this F applied X. And another force going this way, which we'll call force applied Y. So really, if I had to draw this free body diagram correctly, I would probably be saying, well, I've got normal force, but I also have force applied y. I have a force applied x in this direction. I have my gravity again. I should put my little signs across it. And then I've got my frictional force this way, my fk. So that's everything. So the question is, what, what do I do with that? Well, I am concerned about, let me see the second part of the question. 
how much time elapses between the time at which the grade just starts to move. So just starts to move. What we're trying to say there is it just starts. So at, so at t equals 0, my initial velocity equals 0. Because that's I just started to move. So that means that I started from rest. And then pulling with a velocity of 1.5. So at, at t equals I don't know because I have no idea when this happens. I'm trying to figure out how much time elapses, so that makes sense. I want to know what my VF of 1.4 meters per second is. Okay, so I know that so I know that my delta V is equal to 1.4 meters per second. I don't know my acceleration. I don't know my acceleration, and I don't know the time. But I do know that acceleration equals delta V over delta T. So I could actually, if I can figure out the acceleration, I can answer my question by saying delta T is equal to delta V divided by my acceleration. So if I work that out, I'm going to be okay. So I need the acceleration. I need to know what is the acceleration of this entire system. So Let's look at what we got to do. I'm talking about the movement in the x direction. So I'm going to look at my revised thing. And, and really, it's pretty simple. I've got force net x is equal to, now, what do I write first? Last time's acceleration. Thank you. I know that's what you were saying. And that equals, let me see, I am moving in this direction, which means this has to be bigger and I'm going to assume that this way is positive. So force applied x, force applied x minus the frictional force, the frictional force. So what do I got here? Okay, I've got mass, that's uh, 45 kilograms and uh, that's times my acceleration. And that will be equal to force applied x. Uh, force applied x. Now, um, how do I get that? Well, I've got 30 degrees. So I actually, I'm, I'm, if I look at that, I'm looking at a triangle. I'm looking at a triangle where this is 30 degrees. Oops, drew that very small, sorry. This is 115. This is my y. This is my x. So I know that uh, if I was going to get the x, that cosine 30 equals... Um, one side over the hypotenuse, because remember, this is a 90 degree angle, and so I got x over 115. So my x is equal to 115 times cosine 30. So force applied x is the um, 115 times cosine 30. That's my force applied x. And then I should put brackets around this too. Subtract now. My force of friction. Now let's look at this. Um, force friction. Let's. Uh, I'll, I'll write this over here. My friction is equal to mu, which I know, times my normal force. So I need my normal force. So how do we work out normal forces? You have to make sure. Now remember, normal force is not a reaction force to f uh, gravity. It is just simply what is the. It's reacting to whatever is pushing down on the surface. But the surface is now. I have a force going down and a force going up. So my normal force in this case is equal to the uh, force of gravity, the negative force of gravity, plus, plus my force applied y. Oh, okay, okay. So let me see how we do this. We're going to have to say, well, it's mu. That's uh, 0 0.2 times. Now, all of this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the force applied first. So the force applied... I'm going to use that triangle again, and I've got 115, uh, better put brackets around that, 115 times sine of 30. Uh, that's my force applied, and then subtract my force of gravity. My force of gravity in this case is 9.8 times that 45. That's, whew, that's, that, that's a lot of stuff there. So uh, I'm going to break out my calculator here and figure out what all these things are. Okay, so I'll write this again. I got 45 
a equals 115 times uh, 0 0.8. Now I usually go three decimals with my if I'm doing my cosines. You can go more if you want. More numbers means more accuracy. Remember, I don't care about significant digits until the very end. And then I got 0 0.2 times what here I got? Let me see. Now, you might know this, but a sine of 30 is nothing more than 0 0.5. It's half. So half of 115, that's going to be 57.5. And subtracting 9.8 times 45. 9.8 times 45 uh, should be 441. Okay, we're getting somewhere, getting somewhere. So now let's, let's do some more now. Um, what you'll find is that... Let me see. I can bring the 45 over now. So what I'm going to say is that acceleration is equal to. So what is all this? I, I could just simply, oops, I almost forgot a bracket. What does all that add up to? This number will be 99.59. And this will be, uh, well, the whole thing will become, let me see, 76.7, roughly. Now, you'll notice, now this is something kind of important here. Um, I got a negative number, so you're going to ask, well, do I now add it? Do I now add this? So you have to be a little careful because you have to realize, where did you get this number? This number is the normal force. It's the normal force pointed in the y direction. So it doesn't suddenly change the direction of the frictional force. It's not going to be. So you have to sort of really, the, if I was going to write this properly, it should be the absolute value, absolute value of 76.7. Therefore, it always has to be positive. So really what I got here is 99.59 uh, minus 76.7, and that will give me 22.89, roughly. So now what does that tell me? Um, actually, I did something wrong there. It's 22.89, and I brought the 45 over. Um, divide by 45. So that is going to give me a value of 0 0.5087 meters per second squared. So I got my acceleration after all this time. I've got my acceleration. And really, remember, what I'm trying to find is how much time. I'm not looking for this number. I need it, but that's not what the question is asking me. It's asking me, what is the time? And I already said the time will be the change in velocity over acceleration. So delta t, therefore, therefore, delta t is equal to 1.4 divided by 0 0.5087. So this is meters per second. This is meters per second squared. And uh, if you actually look at the units, you're going to notice that it cancels out nice and happily two seconds, which is what I want. And I'll get roughly 2.8 seconds. That's how much time will elapse. And if I look up here, it looks like I'm looking at two significant digits, so 2.8. Hooray. Um, that's what you should have gotten. So um, try that out yourself. This is the typical way you have to do any kind of question that involves you pulling uh, at an angle or pushing at an angle. You'll remember your test had one of these questions and not everybody managed to do it. So I want to make sure that you follow this really carefully. So I drew the picture. Always draw the picture. Picture really helps you understand what's going on. You draw the picture, you draw the free body diagrams, and then you change any angled force into the components of X and Y. And then you have a new free body diagram. Once you do that, well, you're just doing the same thing we do every single time. You just simply have to write out your force net. Um, in this case, you have to decide, are you doing the X or the Y net force? And then you simply uh, add it up, find the missing variable. This is After this, this is just the math, and most of you, I think, uh, have no problem with that. Okay, that's it.